one thing that really gets my goat is when we're recording late at night and I start hearing a radio station come through our uh, recording. How the hell it gets in there? Somehow our recording equipment has become an antenna and we're picking up a local radio station. It gets bad enough to the point that I can hear and I can sing along to the song that's playing on the radio. I can tell what it is. If you listen real quiet, wait, wait, let's be quiet for just a sec. Okay. Don Henley, End of the Innocence. Dang, right at this time it stopped making noise. Just as we're quiet, it stops. There's another thing that gets my goat. It's like when you have a problem with your car and you go to the friggin' place and they're always like, oh, we can't find any, we can't make it stall. Like, I stalled four times on the way to the car shop and you're only a block away. Well, we can't get it to stall. I don't know. I mean, we turned it on and let it run for two seconds, and it didn't stall, so we just turned it off. So frustrating when your car breaks down, and, and you, they will not. I, I don't know what it is. They, like, don't want your money, so they like, whoa, there's nothing wrong with it. But, yeah, it's just insane how that happens. And it's the same way with a computer. Like, your computer, you're at work, your computer stops working, you're doing something crazy. So you go and you get the person that fixes them and just, uh, what is it that it does? I, it's like, it does this all the time. But now, all the time except for right now while you're here. Well, that just happened yesterday. You and I were talking and I was trying to log into something. Oh, yeah. And – I couldn't do it. I typed it in three times, I think. And I uh -huh. was afraid to type it in a fourth time because some of those – Yeah, sometimes they lock you out. Right. And so I called you and I said, hey, what is the password for a box.net account? And you told me. And I said, dang, that's what I typed in. And I typed it in and it logged in fine. <clears throat> Ew. I don't know. I, I mean, my experience with uh, mechanics is always the opposite. They've always got a laundry list of things that they think are – But it's never the thing that really is wrong with your car. They can never find that thing. You're like, uh, my air conditioning doesn't work. And they're like, well, it should work. Oh, you got a leak in your oil and you need a new radiator, but your air conditioning's fine. Uh, but I'm, I'm sweating to death. I'm dying every day in my car. It doesn't work. What's wrong with it? Oh, nothing's wrong with it. Can't find any leak at all, except for the oil. And you need a new windshield. <laughs> that happened just today. <laughs> I was driving on the freeway and... There was construction and they'd shut down our exit. The, the, I was driving with my niece and I couldn't get off. Don't go there. I couldn't get off of my exit. So, so I was like, That's oh, shoot, we're going to have to go three more miles to the next exit. It's also just the way that the road is set up. I, it's so inconvenient. There should be more exits in a town or a city or whatever I live in. And so I kept going and I was behind a bus. And at one point, a bus threw up a rock and it hit my windshield just right in front of me, you know, right in the eye line, if you will. And I was like, whoa, what was that? And sure enough, you could see just the, the little crack. It's like, oh, shoot, that sucks. So we had to go all the way around to the next exit and then double back and go back to essentially where that first exit had been. And the next day, that chip had become a crack. And I swear I could see it expanding. So I got a marker out and I put a little mark with the Sharpie on the windshield where the crack ended. And then I went to the grocery store and by the time I got back, the crack had gone past the mark. So I was like, oh, shoot. Tomorrow I've got to take this thing and get them to fix that. I didn't know where to go. And my mom said, Jiffy Lube does those. Really? And so I was like, okay, that's cool. So I went to Jiffy Lube today and he looked at it and by this point – the crack had expanded all the way as far as it could to the edge of the windshield. And he said, oh, no, I mean, we can fix chips. But this, you have to get a new windshield. Uh, it's just I, I, don't, I don't want to. I don't. <laughs> I, well, it's gone as far as it's going to go. I mean, I don't know how big the crack is. But, you know, once it gets off the end of the window, it's not going to keep going any further. So sometimes that can be handy if you get the crack over near the edge and it just goes uh, – right off the windshield on either side, then you're kind of safe for a while. And this is what you should wait for is the uh, your safety and emissions thing because when you go to get your safety inspection, they're going to tell you you need a new windshield. But if you get a new windshield now, you will get hit by another rock before your next safety and emissions. It, it just will happen. And you will have to get another new windshield six months down the line. This happened to me, and it's kind of a reverse of what I just said to you. But I went in, I had a crack in my windshield, and it had gotten bad. So I went to the safety emissions. They're like, yeah, you're going to have to get a new windshield before you can get your 
Your certificate. Yeah, your certificate, your safety certificate. And I'm just like, uh. Because, you know, it's not just a window. It's a $250 friggin' thing to get your windshield replaced. And so I had to I had to do it because your car is unregistered. And I swear around here, dude, they, they're just – they must have like a special telescope to be able to see that the little sticker on your friggin' car is the wrong color from – thousands of yards away but you go one day without your registration and they'll pull you over and write you a ticket i've had a ticket more than once for that but you live in the (laughs) most corrupt town per capita (laughs) in the united states so maybe there's more cops too yeah so i I, i'm like okay i've got to do it so i got my windshield replaced and i think uh, in the time that it took to get my windshield replaced i got a ticket for driving around without registration but anyways, so I got it replaced, and I'm I'm okay, right? And I'm I'm all good. I got a brand new window; should be great. Three months later, parked my car in front of my sister's house, and I come out later on, and the window is completely shattered. Somebody had driven by and thrown something at it, or I don't know, a tree branch fell out of the sky and landed on it and bounced off really far, so that I couldn't see where to go. I had no idea how the frick this happened. It, there was a snowstorm while I was there, so when I came out to the car, uh, I couldn't see that it was shattered. I got into my car, and there was all these little kind of crystally things on my seat. And I was thinking, all this snow has gotten into my car. Dang it. Holy cow, it was broken in? Yeah, little flakes of it were, had come off. I thought it was just pieces of ice or something that had fallen in when I opened the door because it was piled with snow on top. I get in, I sit down, I look at my window, and I can see this gigantic spider web breaking. And I was like, oh, crap. And I believe it was Valentine's Day, too. It was a special present for me that that happened. And uh, I was unable to see my wife that day because I had to sit at my sister's house all morning to get my windshield fixed. I had to wait until a guy could come out. That's all right. I kept your wife company that particular <laughs> oh, thank evening. Thank you very much. So, yeah, it was a, a wonderful Valentine's Day for me and nothing to do really. But, yeah, don't get your window fixed until uh, safety and emissions time. Because if you do, it will break again. So just save yourself the money. Although, if you wait that long, then three months later it will break completely like it did for me. So, you know, whatever. You're screwed. Mm. Well, on this depressing note, maybe we should end. (laughs) I mean, I have stories and I mean, there was the time that my car broke down and the guy at the shop said that it was unfixable, that I was going to have to get a new car. And he's like, you know, we'll take it and wreck it for you, you know, or whatever. And and, and I was like, oh, okay. And, you know, two weeks later, I saw that car driving around town. The guys had fixed it and kept it. Sold it. But I won't tell that story. (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, and I won't tell the story of how the last time I took it in to get its inspection done, the keys were in it and the engine was already running when I went to take the car home. And it didn't occur to me why they would do that until I tried to start it again later that day and it wouldn't start. And they're like, oh, yeah, your battery was almost dead. We, we didn't say anything. But we, <laughs> yeah, we were afraid to turn it off because we thought you wouldn't be able to start it again. It's like, uh, why, why would you not say anything? Why? <laughs> There's that. There is that. But before we go, um, there was a there was somebody who commented that they would be moved to donate if you were to say that gets my goat in your Sean Connery impersonation. Now, we'd never realized how easy it would be to get a donation. Right. That's I all would, it took. I would sing Bohemian Rhapsody in Sean Connery's voice if somebody said that they would donate because of it. I <laughs> How would that go, Big? Uh, I'm c- just a little silhouette of a man. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, would you do the Fandango? Thunderbolts and lightning. All right, I won't do that. <laughs> but I loved you, trusted you, and how did you repay me? That really gets my goat. You know, I think that not- must be a line from uh, Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Oh, Darby he probably, O'Gill and the Little People. He probably people. said that in there somewhere. I love you, Kate. And I think that you love me. That really gets my goat. That Yeah, in those days, he didn't have the lisp, which makes it so easy to do Connery. You know, just to say money penny without the lisp is difficult. But there was that day that I was trying to do it. And then 
<laughs> I couldn't not do it for the rest of the characters. And you're just like, no, that's Connery again. That got my go-to. Right. Explain the, the little the, the us running out of time thing. The, 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 I, that gets our go. Oh, you want me to talk about what? Okay. Recently, my Soundtrack Pro program has gone nutty on us. It's a bit nutty. Something crazy. Like, what is it that would happen? We would get like a lot of really bad popping and stuff in our audio when we would record with it. But we found that elsewhere it didn't do that. So I started using another program that I just had for simple things, just getting audio from various places. This program called Audio Hijack Pro. And it's one of those programs where they, they'll give you the free trial, but they want you to buy the version and so a lot of those programs, they'll take like essential features out or they'll make, you know, the program almost useless uh, if you don't buy it. And, and in this case, what they've done is, yes, you can record audio, but it has to be less than 10 minutes worth. If you go over 10 minutes, then it adds static into your recording for you. <laughs> complimentary it, it just adds it in there for uh, no free extra charge. no extra charge nice, and luckily you wear headphones when we record i don't like to hear my voice it distracts me but you wear headphones so if my microphone cuts out or i'm talking too quietly as i want to do you can tell me hey say that again or or, or you know there was coughing or or do you really want to say the c word again <laughs> you know those sort of things and you can catch it when suddenly yeah when the static comes in, I'll be listening. Of course, we've got the timer counting down in front of us, but we never pay attention. We try and fit in too much, and then we run out of time. I think you was were this saying an something invitation? about Sean Connery before the time elapsed, though. My pretty Irish girl. No, I think I was just saying maybe if you mention this, people will donate, and you'll be able to buy the version. Oh, that actually, that'd be fun. There was a screenwriting program that I had on my computer, and you could open files, but it wouldn't allow you to save files unless you bought the real uh, <laughs> program. And so, yeah, ultimately it was really, really useless because you can always just open a screenplay in Word or something. You know what I mean? Right. The only reason you would want a screenwriting program is to screenwrite. <laughs> Can't overdo it with a trial version or else uh... – yeah, nobody's going to want the real version. But I guess it could go the other way, too. You could make it too nice, and then people just use the trial version. They don't need the real version. I don't know. I wonder how much the real version would be. I've never uh, checked. Oh, see, I thought this was all a very elaborate setup to asking people to donate so that you could buy the real version. But Nah. Okay. I would just spend it on booze and cheap women, maybe some gambling, Vegas, something like that. So... Don't donate, whatever you do, because we might get another voice chip for 080T. Oh, wait, that's too far ahead. I can't mention that, huh? No, I'm that's sure. That's going to be like six months from now when that episode finally comes out. We would have pounded that joke into the ground long before then. I think we actually had announcer man on one of these, that gets my goats. Oh, yeah? But we've never had any use for Wait, that goes without saying. We've never had any use for our 080T. All right. Yeah, we've talked a long time. This yeah, like that's got extra, my goat. Right? This so. long thing. Time for nighty night. See, that bothers me when adults use childlike words <laughs> like nighty night or potty or tinkle. Oh, jeez, do you say tinkle? No. Dear Lord, that's but, uh, such a lame word. I think I did say that the other day because I walked into the bathroom at work and this guy was standing there in front of the urinal and he's got his friggin' phone out and he's looking at it and I swear he's sitting there texting with one hand and taking a whiz with the other and I walked past him and I was like, dude, texting while you tinkle is just as dangerous as texting while driving, man. I thought that was a good, you know, alliteration. I, th I thought that, that is, it was a worthwhile really uh, expression, a good reason to use the word tinkle. <laughs> There's the probably not The only other. <laughs> reason to word, use that word. So I, if you're mocking someone else for using the word tinkle, it's okay to say tinkle. Hey, hey, hey that's our word. No. <laughs> I worked in a news station, as you know, and we did this story one night of – a group of teenagers that had all been killed because their car plowed into a train or a bridge and butment or 
something yeah, off hard. the edge of the earth. Yes, this okay. this car just went out of control badly enough to kill four people. And they said, you know, that the girl had been texting while she was driving. And so I made the joke of how would you like to be the other person that this girl is texting? Where she's like, yeah, I'll see you at the, oh my God. And, you know, it's like seven O's. <laughs> and the person I made the joke to said, well, you wouldn't actually type out the, the, the for some reason, I guess they didn't realize that it was a, a joke in poor taste. They just. <laughs> it's like, well, how would you? You wouldn't have time to hit sand before you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just, I, oh gosh, I hate to, I hate toast. I love toast. What? Where did that come from? I don't know. I like toast too. What are you? What's your deal, dude? Get over the toast problem. I don't know what's wrong with me. But no, I hate texting. There's, in my opinion, there's no need for texting. You not when you can just talk to somebody. Not Does when your phone audience. receive texts? Yes, but it charges me every single time. Yeah? Yeah, I pay for every call I make and every text that I receive. Or every call I receive. Hmm. Or every time I check my voicemail. I'm going to start texting you. No, please don't. <laughs> On a regular basis. At least twice a day. Oh, you monster. Oh, and that's, a, that's another thing that infuriates me about text messaging is my uncle will send these inane texts like... This is Sparta! Exclamation point, and he sends it, and I was like, "Oh, thanks, thanks, John. Ten cents for that." <laughs> or you know, it's like, "I will kill this American disease," and of course, there's not enough room for that for all entire the exclamation phrase. Points, so that's right? a twenty cent text there. Cause it took <laughs> that two. does sound like a kind of a sucky phone plan. Uh, it's 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 by choice because I'm not a big cell phone user, and, and I actually got a cell phone before you did, right? Yes, you did. Yeah, but. I didn't think that there was a man, woman, or child that disliked cell phones as much as I did. In L.A., I remember when you know, I went to a costume shop in 2003 for Halloween because I wanted to rent a costume. And they had a great big sign that said, if you are talking on your cell phone, you will not be helped. And I was just like, wow, this is the coolest thing ever. And I've since seen other signs like that. But I feel like, you know, they're probably those special interest groups we talked about last week <laughs> where you know somebody could say, hey, you can't tell somebody not to be on their cell phone. You're impugning on their civil liberties. You're, you're. I, I don't know why the why ethnically the, the questionable silly, voice had to be silly used. Voice? But uh, I completely and totally understand that cell phone thing because I've been in line, you know, Target or something like that behind somebody that's on the cell phone. And, you know, the woman's like, OK, is this everything? A cash or charge? You need paper or plastic? You want batteries with that? And she's like, uh, uh, just just a second. No, I didn't. No, three times. But well, not since our wedding night. And it's just like, what? You actually told the woman bagging your groceries to hold on? <laughs> But just something about having a cell phone suddenly means that you are above the law. So like you don't have to follow normal decorum or anything like that now. You are lying to yourself when you've got a cell phone. It was just like when car phones came out in the 80s. And it was like, oh, you've got a car phone. That means you're better than me. <laughs> That's what cell phones have continued to be. I mean, now they do everything and you have no need to ever interact with another human being. Yeah, that's but good. I, if if I haven't offended someone in these rants, then I'm not doing my job, right? I'm sure there's someone that you've offended. Okay. No, no. That's what I'm saying, that it should be par for the course. People know what they're signing up for. This is our fourth episode. <laughs> that means we've been wasting your time for a month, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm sorry, gentleman. Okay. I've I've run out of material. Yeah, I've run out of patience. It's time to end this thing. You notice that... Put it out of its misery. Mickey Mouse wears pants but no shirt. But Donald Duck wears a shirt and... No pants! He's got my pants! All right, we'll I've been Rich Outfield. Big Anklevich, signing off. Goodbye. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons license. Why am I telling you this?